Welcome, wrestling fans, to a new episode of 360 Wrestling Fanatic. I am your host, Lance Brack, once again. Episode 337. Hope everyone had a great weekend. On this episode, I'm going to talk about two shows that took place this past Saturday. First off, afternoon one, WWE Tribute to the Troops and House of Glory Revelations. And to start off, I'm going to talk about Tribute to the Troops, which was an early show 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And, uh, man, if you're on the West Coast, that'd be 11.30. And so, I, first off, though, I was still working when it was on, so I DVR'd it. But on Sling, using the DVR, and... There was a college basketball game on before. But that game ended up going over. So I ended up missing the last part of the main event. So I had to find the rest of it online. Uh, And Sling doesn't have like cable DVRs have where you can like choose to go like 5 minutes over, 10 minutes over, 15 minutes over the end time in case like something does go wrong. Or at least not that I know of anyway. And let's get on to this year's tribute to the troops. The 20th one. Not quite the 20th anniversary like WWE built it. I know some people get upset with WWE and their math. I remember really the first case of this was back at WrestleMania 25 when they built it as the 25th anniversary of WrestleMania. And like I said, doesn't really bother me that much though. And one thing that does kind of bother me though is that it's not really as special as it used to be. Like the first one in 2003, which was a, technically wasn't tribute to the troops, was the first one they built as Christmas from Baghdad. And because it was Thursday... Christmas landed on Thursday that year when SmackDown was still on Thursday. So instead of a regular episode of SmackDown, they did the Christmas from Baghdad special, which was still on UPN at the time. And then they went to other places, Afghanistan, other places in Iraq. And then they started uh like once the troops left there they started them doing here in the united states and then they started having musical guests stuff like that other entertainment guests being a part of it and they had the main event stars on the show and but the last few years though there's just like not really as built as like a big show anymore. It's like, I mean, I'm not saying it was ever like a pay-per-view quality show or anything. Or, and storylines were kind of pushed aside. But it was still kind of built as a big deal though. And they, like I said, they had the main event guys on there. Put them in like a six-man tag or an eight-man tag, something like that. With some of them 
main eventers, like a couple main eventers from Raw and SmackDown, the ones that were feuding at the time, put them together in like one big eight-man tag, I believe, and the shows were treated more special, and this one, no disrespect to anybody on the show, though, but like really the biggest names as of right now that were on the show were Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. Again, definitely don't mean any disrespect to Sheamus or Drew McIntyre. Fan of both of them, but it was definitely lacking star power this year, I thought. And not trying to be negative about the show, but... Let's get right into it. Braun Strowman taking on L.A. Knight. And the, also the commentators of the show, Michael Cole and JBL. Which it has been discussed before that this was actually JBL's idea that they did this show for the troops every year. And Strowman defeats L.A. Knight, like I said. Storylines are kind of pushed aside for it. I mean, Cole did bring up with what's going on between L.A. Knight and Bray Wyatt on Friday Night Smackdown. And then in between the matches, they have video packages of different troops, which is nice. Um, and... There was more of that and stuff, and when um, before when the show used to be two hours, and that's when the audience used to be actual troops. It was the whole audience, and like this year they just taped it after an episode of SmackDown. And next up we have women's action, Ronda Rousey. And Shayna Baszler defeat the team of Tamina Snuka and Emma. When Baszler makes Tamina submit. And the main event for this year's 2002 Tribute to the Troops. We see Sheamus, Drew McIntyre, and Ricochet defeat Imperium when Ricochet pins Geyser. That was this year's... WWE tribute to the troops, like I said, kind of a lackluster show. I don't mean to, I don't want to make it sound like I'm disrespecting the troops at all, but definitely not as, it's definitely not treated as special of a show like it used to be. Like I said, it wasn't, it was like a primetime special, two hours. It used to have the main event stars on the show and like I said they just taped this year's after an episode of Smackdown and I don't really see that changing anytime soon like next year it could be the same but I hope it does get better though I'm not saying like I said earlier it doesn't have to be this big, like, pay-per-view quality show, have title changes, or have really, like I said, the storylines, they can, um, be put on hold for that show, and, but just have the main event stars there, like, put them six-man tag, eight-man tag, or just a regular tag team match, and... I hope it gets better. I'll just say that. And now, on to the next show I'm going to talk about on this episode of 360 Wrestling Fanatic, House of Glory Revelations, which was live from Queens, New York at Club La Boom. And we kick things off for the House of Glory Cruiserweight Championship. Nolo Katano taking on Mighty Mati. 
And pretty good match here. Monty retains the Cruiserweight Championship. But then after the match, he is attacked by No Lowe's Ninjas. Manders taking on Carlos Ramirez. Ramirez gets the win with a pump handle pile driver. The House of Glory Women's Championship is now on the line. The Ultraviolet defeats Masha Slamovich with a victory roll. And this match I thought was very good actually. Of course, a lot of people are familiar with Masha Slamovich from Impact Wrestling. And I don't know a whole lot of Ultraviolet. I've seen a little bit of her and I am impressed. The little I have seen of her. Very good match here. Definitely this one is one you should check out. The House of Glory Crown Jewel Championship. On the line next. Lince Dorado taking on Charles Mason. And Lince Dorado, of course, formerly of the Lucha House Party in the WWE. Good match here. Dorado looked good. And is Mason getting the win though via submission? He has him. He has a submission locked in. About to take off his mask, and then Dorado taps out. The House of Glory World Championship is on the line. Nick Aldis challenging Jacob Fatu. First, Aldis comes to the ring and cuts a promo on about how. He didn't want to be in the main event. He wanted to get his match over with so he could hurry up and leave Queens, New York. Because the next night he would be wrestling in a great wrestling city of St. Louis. That gets a lot of heat from the crowd there in Queens, New York. And he talks about his dislike of Queens, and then we see the HOG champion, Jacob Fatu. This is a very good match. Also, one that you need to check out if you did not see the show. Big fan of both. Nick Aldis, of course, recently known for his long reign as the NWA world champion. Recently, um... Being announced that he was leaving NWA. And Jacob Fatu, the MLW champion, has done very good in Major League Wrestling. Fan of Jacob Fatu. These two had a really good match. And is Fatu retaining? And next up, we have Santa Claus making an appearance with Michael Fane and Ben Rudin, Nolo Katano, and the Ninjas. This one's a pretty crazy, wild match. I don't know if I would say a comedy match, but there were a few spots that were kind of comedy. And Santa actually gets the missed in the face from Nolo Katano and then Nolo pins Fane and the House of Glory let's see it continues with revelations up next the match one of the matches that was most hyped and advertised for this one Low key taking on Kenta, which was a rematch from a big match from one of the early Ring of Honor final battles in the early years of Ring of Honor. Very good match here from these two great wrestlers. We have a little interference, unfortunately, though, from HOGPD Evander James. 
tries to handcuff low key. And then unfortunately, this match ends in a no contest. But after the match, they set it up where low key and Kenta both won a third match. And early February is the next House of Glory show they announced. I want to say maybe February 5th, but I'm not sure. And I'm sure they're probably going to have a rematch between Low Key and Kenta on that show. And now it is time for the main event of the evening. The House of Glory Tag Team Championships are on the line. The main event defending against the Briscoes coming off of that huge double dog collar match against FTR at final battle last week for the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships. And not only are they the new ROH Tag Team Champions, but they are also the House of Glory World Tag Team Champions going into this match. Two out of three falls, and the Briscoes, kind of a smart strategy, at least it seems like anyway, they get disqualified, losing the first fall on purpose, weakening the main event going forward into the match, and they go up 1-0. And the stipulation for this, not just two out of three falls, but the first fall, just regular wrestling match, and then the next two falls are no disqualification. And it is the main event coming back and winning two straight falls to defeat the Briscoes for the House of Glory World Tag Team Championships. Great main event, I thought. Don't know a whole lot about the main event, but obviously know the Briscoes. Really good match here. Check it out in case you didn't see it. And then, after the match, we see the amazing Red and Brian XL come to the ring and congratulate the main event on their victory. But then, they attack both of them. And this looks like they want to challenge for those HOG tag team titles. Could see that. At the next show in February, possibly. But one thing is, though, it might work, who knows, but I'm kind of surprised seeing the amazing Red as a heel. Of course, I've seen him many times, TNA, Ring of Honor, other indies. He's like just one of those guys you want to root for. A natural baby face, I guess you could say. Great performer in the ring. And who knows, maybe he could work as a heel. You never know. And that's all for House of Glory Revelations. Very good show, I thought. It's available on Fight Plus, which is only four ninety nine a month. You get a lot of great indie shows. Definitely worth that price. If you haven't tried it yet, I definitely recommend checking out Fight Plus on the Fight app. Not only House of Glory, but also GCW, Game Changer Wrestling, AIW, Wrestle Wrestle Evolver, or Revolver, excuse me, and more indie promotions on Fight Plus. Plus, besides, I saw on Fight, and this, either this week or the next week, they're going to be showing Ric Flair's last match on Fight Plus, so in case you missed it back in August, you'll have a chance to check it out for only $5, which is cheaper than the price when it originally aired, so definitely consider checking that out. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of 360 Wrestling Fanatic. 
this this week, last week of bell ringing. Since next week will be Christmas. Christmas Eve is my last day. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, 360wrestlingpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you very much for tuning in. Until the next episode, keep watching wrestling. I am Lance, and I am a wrestling fanatic.